The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. Gotham City, news and entertainment capital of the world. Of all the fits that were news to print recently, this little headliner, courtesy Mark Messier, was the top tale. It's not that Wayne Gretzky wasn't the grateful one. He knows it takes a lot to throw off Gilmore. One possible killer is the Tower of Power on defense. Brian Leach can score the goals. And just to add impact, his defensive partner, Jeff Bukaboom, comes along for the ride to inflict pain. Oh, and let's not forget the goaltender who's not afraid to throw down his gloves. He's the real reason the Devils' offense went bare in Game 2. So, start spreading the chews. The Devils are pouring over the Hudson, looking for a little ink at the rink tonight in New York, New York. Tonight, Madison Square Garden, New York City is the setting for a great series. The New Jersey Devils, New York Rangers, all even at a game apiece after two. Both teams with 2 nothing victories to celebrate as we get set for game three tonight. Nationwide on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. And before we get to the stories stateside, and there are oodles of them, let's begin at Helsinki, Finland, where this morning Team Canada played the home side, the Finns, in a key game in the medal round. A huge victory for Canada came with three and a half minutes to play in a scoreless battle. Big ice and all. It took Jeff Friesen's speed to go in and beat Jarmo Milas. The setup from Mark Recchi, who was sensational. He'd been high sticked, went off to get fixed up. He was dying to get back in a power play. He was huge for the Canadians. So was Jeff Friesen, uh, Kelly Rudy's teammate, scoring the only goal on the day. And so Canada wins. They'll play the Czech Republic next. And if they win that, it's a big game against Russia for the right to move into the best of three championship final. Well, New Jersey's you see arriving here at Madison Square Garden hours ago. They've been roaring on home ice in the first periods. Big starts have been a real key for the Devils. They outshot the Rangers 16-4 in the last game, although they were down 1-0. 19-6 was their edge in shots in the first game of the series. Go back to the Montreal series. They outshot the Canadians in game 5, 19-4. So Rangers have got to be ready. Some other news from around the NHL. Hartford looks like it's moving to Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina. Peter Carmonis, the owner of the Whalers, has a letter of intent to move the team and call it the Carolina Hurricanes, but the players have been told not to be surprised if they play one more year in Hartford. Still, Carmona says he will usher in the new millennium in a new building in Raleigh-Durham. Those twin cities have a population of 400,000, but in a 50-mile radius, a population of 1.5. It's the largest market in the U.S. without a major pro sports team, and now it's got one. As you know, in Phoenix, they made a coaching change today. Don Hay, we're disappointed to say, has been fired as head coach, and Paul McLean is gone, too. More on that with Bobby Smith in the second intermission of our telecast this evening. Let's get you to New York. Lots to talk about with the Devils and the Rangers. There's Chris Cuthbert and John Garrett. Gentlemen. Thanks, Ron. Good evening, everybody. Well, it's game three tonight, and John, we're still waiting for our first five-on-five -five goal of this series. Obviously, when two teams are matched up like this, special teams take on even more importance. Well, the team that has scored the power play goal has won both games, New Jersey in game one and then the Rangers in game two, on a beautiful play by Wayne Gretzky to a defenseman, Brian Leach. And that's the first goal by a defenseman from the Rangers all this playoff season. You have to get offense from the defense, and Brian Leach can supply that. Well, they have to do that against the stifling New Jersey Devils. Now, Gretzky and Messier did not record a shot on goal in game two as the Rangers take the ice here to a thunderous roar. It's the first time that they've both been held off the score sheet, yet, John, there's a sense that the Rangers can score, and maybe the Devils will have more trouble scoring. What do you think of that? Well, Ron talked about the shots on goal in the first period by the New Jersey Devils. Sure, shots are great. They had a 15 nothing edge shots on net in game two, but they didn't score. And when you get that many shots, you should be able to bury some chances. And they're going to have to get some goals from Doug Gilmore or Steve Thomas. Still looking for their first to the playoffs. Ron? Okay, fellas, uh, you're right. The shots have to be the right ones. Uh, Claude Lemieux was able to do that when he won the Conn Smythe Trophy in 95, and they had Stefan Riche and Neil Broughton, too, who were their top two scorers. None are there, so they're looking for offense in the New Jersey Devils. They'll try to find it in Manhattan. The crowd's filing in for Game 3. We'll have more on the story next on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Welcome back to the Broadcast Center. Just before the face-off at MSG in New York City, Scott Oakes made the trek over from Buffalo to set the scene on Game 3, the Devils and Rangers. 
Iron Mike. He of the Iron Will who would have things done his way. When last these teams met in the playoffs, it was the moniker for the Rangers coach. Keenan's long gone, but there is another Iron Mike. In fact, Richter also had a will of iron in 94. This was the save of the series with the Devils that kept the Rangers alive in their drive to the Cup. Three years later and two days ago, the Devils couldn't break Richter's will in Game 2. One virtually impossible save summed up the Ranger goaltender's day. Before that, two warhorses collided. Messier imprinted his will on Gilmore, that to set the tone. And moments later, the great one with a fine touch backhand pass to Brian Leach. For the only goal the Rangers required to tie the affair at one. Now have the battle lines been drawn? Uh, I don't know if they've really been drawn yet. Uh, it's still going to be physical and, and uh, you know, both teams seem to be crossing the battle line right now. And, and, uh, um, we're going head to head. Um, you know, everybody talked about how big and strong New Jersey was as a team, and uh, actually, we're probably a bigger team than they are. And uh, somebody had pointed that out that it was in one of the media guides that uh, we were a bigger team than they were. So uh, we've got an awful lot of experience on our team, and, and we're going to rely on that experience to take us through the series. You know, he is because as tough as it's been, these are the two least penalized teams of the eight teams still alive in the 1997 Stanley Cup playoffs. Let's get to New York. Here's Chris and John once again. Thank you, Ron. We're ready for game three from MSG, the New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils. And this has become the best goaltending duel of the Stanley Cup playoffs so far. Martin Brodeur celebrates his 25th birthday tonight in. Game one, he stopped 41 of 42 shots, and Mike Richter's been just as sharp at the other end. 32 saves in his eighth shutout of the playoffs in game number two. Gary Fraser is the referee. Shane Heyer, Jay Shares are on the lines. Coley Campbell said it was nasty in game two. Not quite as nasty as the series in 94, John, but it's gonna get there. Well, it takes a while. These two teams had not played each other since February. And now they play two games in three nights, and you can bet it will get nastier here in game three. Here's Dennis Peterson centering it, then Scott Stevens testing Mike Richter right away. And as Ron McLean mentioned, you wonder if the Rangers can get off to a better start tonight than they have in the first two games. Outshot 35 to 10 in the opening period of the series so far. Now Gretzky comes on the ice, replacing Messier, and it's Stevens, the captain for New Jersey. Another long shot, and we've seen a lot of that in the first two games of the series, John. Well, the Devils count on Mike Richter giving up a few rebounds on long shots. There was one, but the Rangers did a good job keeping them outside. Doug Gilmore is centering a line with Randy McKay and Brian Ralston as the Rangers get it out to center ice. Jacques Lemaire says he won't be as intent on all the line matching now that he's here in New York and will likely roll over four lines more than he did at the Meadowlands Arena. Here's Scott Niedemeyer, smooth skating defenseman into the Ranger zone. Niedemeyer tied up there, left it for Ralston. Ralston being watched. He turns it in for Gilmore. Gilmore up against Luke Robitaille as they jam against the boards. Puck comes now to the sideboards as the battle continues. Randy McKay up there in support of Gilmore, and McKay puts it in front, and it'll be sent out to Gretzky. Here's Gretzky with only Danico back. The rest of the Rangers changing. What a pass! Gretzky sending it Cardinal. Stopped by Brodeur. Out in front it goes, and Niedermeyer will get it out to center. Wayne Gretzky with eyes in the back of his head once again. And catching the Devils on a line change, Russ Cardinal in by himself. In front, the East one dropped by Brodeur. Oh, Brodeur start, sharp to start. Peter Zezel's in the New Jersey lineup tonight. Long shot by Zezel, and now Dave Ellett. The Zezel's pulled down in front of the net. Puck going high along the glass. Flatly can't corral it. And now on the near side, Reed Simpson in for Zezel. Centering it, Garen can't find it. And back comes Cortnell coming off his best game as a Ranger. Puck hit with a high stick. And play whistled down after a torrid start. Key saves at key times, and Martin Brodeur is the guy that can do it. Mike Richter at the other end in game two made the key saves early, and Wayne Gretzky sent Russ Cortnell in. Chris, the New Jersey Devils have scored first in so many games this year, and a lot of it has to do with their goaltending. Gretz sees 
that the New Jersey Devils are changing. Russ Cortnell's off the bench. Here he comes, and the Devils can't catch him. Goes to the backhand. Mark Tambro Dura stayed right with him. Beautiful patience. And then Brodeur on Eastwood comes across, stacks the pads, gets the leg up. What a save by Martin Brodeur, covering as much of the net as he could, stopping it with his left hand. Well, a magic play by Gretzky. And the Rangers, for the first time in the series, get the early scoring opportunities. Well, I think Wayne Gretzky surprised the Devils by making that play outside the blue line. Normally, he gains the blue line, then makes that turn. He turned at the red line and sent Cortnall in. Now Messier's on the move. Into Devil territory. Tried to drop it for Graves. Intercepted by the Devils and back they come. Long shoot in by Bobby Carpenter. And that one came into the goal. Crease frozen by Mike Richter. New Jersey Devils lost game two, and naturally you're going to have to make a few adjustments, but you've played so many games during the year. They're just fine-tuning. Your power play is 0 for 7. You want to get some special teams goal. That's one of the keys. Finish around the net. 15 shots in the first 12 minutes. No goal. And use all four lines. They're a big team. They can wear a team down. And if this is a long series, and Chris, I think it is going to be a long series, you use four lines by game six. I think the New York Rangers will be the more tired of the two teams, and the Devils will be able to take advantage. You see Bobby Carpenter still up against Messier and held him without a shot in game two. Kind of a familiar script from the Montreal, New Jersey series, and that Coley Campbell said, I'm kind of happy with the matchups. That's what Mario Tremblay said. And so it continues to be Messier against Carpenter. As icing is the call, we're scoreless. First period at MSG. In game two, but they didn't play that well. They relied on their goaltender too much. They have to force the issue on offense. Get some more shots on Martin Brodeur. Get off to a better start, and they have done that. They've had two quality scoring chances already and continue better work on faceoffs. They were much better in game two. They were awful in game one, but they still were beaten by the Devils on more faceoffs than they won. Coley Campbell talked about them being so much better in game two, but they still, in their own zone in particular, they have to concentrate more on faceoffs. This is Nicholas Sundstrom against Gilmore, and the Rangers win that, and it comes back to 99. Ulf Samuelson, who was a star in game two, along with Jeff Bukaboom, on the ice right now, Karpatsev off the boards. And Danico back to his defensive partner, Scott Niedemeyer. Brother Rob's in the crowd cheering him on today as Gilmore flips it in. Played around by Richter. Now along the boards, Ralston is body. Comes to Randy McKay and Gilmore fighting for possession. Gilmore shoveled it in front. Gretzky almost took a high stick, got it to Robotai, back to Gretzky. On the attack they go, Samuelson's jumped up, Robotai shot, and it needed by Gretzky scores! this play by gaining the blue line. He forces the defense to back in. They back in, back in. Luke Robitaille takes the shot. The Rangers get a break. The shot bounces right to Wayne Gretzky off Scott Niedemeyer's stick and Gretzky on the forehand, no problem. Gretzky gains the blue line, forces the defense back. That allows Robitaille some room to take the shot. There's Gretzky going to the net. Stick on the ice and no chance for Martin Brodeur. He had a hat trick in game four of the Florida series here. A dazzling night for Gretzky, and he's off to an amazing start here. The blind pass to Cortnall for a breakaway opportunity, and now Gretzky has his fifth of the playoffs at 3.57, and the Rangers get the all-important opening goal. Robitaille gets the lone assist. It's a three-on-three, three, but the defense respects Wayne Gretzky so much, they back in, and they back up, back up. Luke Robitaille takes the shot. Off Niedemeyer stick right to Gretzky. That's a bad break for the Devils, but their defense is backing in, so Niedemeyer has to take the chance. He gets his stick down, and there's Gretzky banging it by Brodeur. Brodeur got a piece of it, and that shows his quickness. The bad deflection right to Gretzky, and in it goes. 
Well, after game two, he talked about the importance of scoring first against New Jersey. The entire complexion of the game changes when the Devils have to play from behind. And for the second time in three games in the series, the Rangers do have the icebreaker. Boy, this is a louder building than the Meadowlands Arena. And in New Jersey, more of a mix of who the crowd is cheering for here. It's pretty well unanimous. Now here's a steal, and it's Steve Thomas in, blasting the shot. And Richter got a piece of that. Thomas after it again, still looking for his first of the playoff. Put it in front, and then goes off the defenseman and is covered by Mike Richter, and we've got some commotion and emotion in front of goaltender Richter. Uh, Bobby Holik, who played very well against the Montreal Canadiens, and because of the line matching, hasn't played that much against the Rangers, driving to the net. And Jacques Lemaire wants to change his lines now. First home game against the Florida Panthers, Wayne Gretzky. That's the first goal against the Florida Panthers. That was on the road, but here at Madison Square Garden, almost the same position as the goal tonight on the left side on his forehand, and there's the vintage Gretzky shot high over John Van Beesbrick glove, and then on the stick side. And as a goaltender, what are you supposed to do? You guess high glove side, and then he goes the other way, and he likes to shoot from the wrong wing, as we've seen so many times throughout Wayne Gretzky's illustrious career. What a big goal that was in game two in Florida. The Rangers struggling shutout in game one. The Panthers playing their style game. And the first goal by Wayne Gretzky giving his team some confidence. Here's Steve Thomas who is really struggling, taking the long shot. Mike Richter in perfect position. Five feet out, top of the crease. Knows Thomas has to shoot. Doesn't give him anything to shoot at. Well, the first two games of this series were about as freewheeling as the Gary Kasparov deep blue computer chess match. <laughs> Much different story here in the opening period of game three. Graves, long shoot in on Brodeur. Stevens can't play it around. Centered and knocked out of midair by Chambers. Bukaboom at the point. Puts it in behind the goal. Stevens there for the Devils. And he'll send it down the ice. But what a turnabout from the first period of game two. Thomas got to the puck first, but paid the price as Bukaboom. Dished out another heavy hit. Now Leach on the attack, and he's tattooed by Stevens. Gets up, passes to Messier, shooting, and that's blocked by Chambers. Back it comes to Leach. Messier surveys the scene. In front, and the score! That's a peek in it. the big hit on Brian Leach and Leach got right up and then gets involved in the play backhand pass by Mark Messier to has a Tikkanen and a Tikkanen on his forehand wrong wing beautiful backhand pass by Mark Messier across to Tikkanen and the Devils running around defensively and you don't see that very much from the New Jersey Devils and there's a frustrated Mark Ambrose Dewar down on the ice. Take it in from Messier and Leach. 5.24 the time of the goal. Now the Devils throw it in front. As New Jersey tries to go to the attack. 16th best offense during the year. Here's a chance and Ralston shot. Blocked before it got to Richter. What a pass by Messier. That was from the Gretzky highlight reel. Now New Jersey trying to get back in this game. Niedermeyer wheels it to Ralston. Shooting in, rebound scores! The Devils answer right back with one of their own. Randy McKay is tough to handle in front of the net and the New York Rangers couldn't handle McKay. Good pressure and McKay gets position and keeps his stick free. Gretzky on Niedermeyer and offense from the defense. Niedermeyer in deep, sets the play up and McKay it can't be handled by Luke Robitaille. Luke Robitaille is just out strength. 
by Randy McKay. I don't know whether there's a word like that, outstrength, but <laughs> Luke Robitaille was outstrength by Randy McKay, and in it goes. Well, it's not unanimous. There is one New Jersey fan here. They're reviewing the play. Randy McKay was such a pivotal man for the Devils two years ago in their Stanley Cup victory, eight goals. This would be his first of the 97 playoffs if it stands. I think it will stand, Chris. I don't think there was anybody in the crease. Here's Randy McKay. He's outside the crease. Luke Grobatai is trying to handle him. His right skate was, but then he faded out farther, and nobody in the crease there. Nobody in the crease on that side. Good shot from our net cam, and Randy McKay bangs it in. You know, the debate rages on, and it was interesting. After the Thomas disallowed goal, it is a goal. Denny Morrell is the supervisor here. <laughs> the difference, when you're in Madison Square Garden, you have to have the video replay guy in a cage. <laughs> they might be throwing stuff at him. Here's McKay. His right skate is in, but then it goes out. Before the puck comes to McKay, he never goes back in. The guy from behind the net doesn't go in. Simpson was circling the wagons, and McKay just out-muscled Luke Robitaille and banged it in. It was interesting, though. The Devils lost a goal in Game 2, the Steve Thomas goal that was called back. After the game, Jacques Lemaire was in support of the rule. Coley Campbell, who benefited from the video replay in Game 2, said he doesn't like the rule and hope it's refined in the offseason. So it is 2-1. to one. That goal by New Jersey came 40 seconds after the Rangers' goal by Tikkanen had made it 2 to nothing. So 6.04 into the hockey game, we already have the highest scoring game in this series. And we don't have to worry about saying that shutout word. Pat Flatley, he's taken into the Devils bench. Odeline back behind his net. And now slowly working out with Ellis. Here's Steve Thomas dancing back in, trying to center it with Holik in front. And it comes to the near side for Eastwood. Off the boards, pass flatly. Odeline sends it ahead and Bill Guerin now turns with Holik over the line. Long shot, Richter collecting the rebound and holding on. That's quickly stifled. McKay the goal scorer, Ralston and Niedemeyer the assists on the goal. Scott Niedemeyer in behind the net, and that created some offense for the Devils. Wayne Gretzky trying to check Niedemeyer, and Luke Robitaille ended up in a defensive position in front of the net, couldn't handle it. The Rangers goal, the Tikkanen goal, is set up by Brian Leach. He takes the hit from Scott Stevens, and that was a good hit. Leach got right up, and then Messier has a shot, follows the puck, looks around, spots Essa Tikkanen, Look at him look before he gets that puck. He looks, sees Deacon in perfect backhand pass. In it goes, and up goes the arms in celebration. Perfect pass from Mark Messier and Brian Leach. Well, Coley Campbell talking to us before the game about what a smart player Essa Tikkanen is. And during the regular season now, that body's taking a lot of punishment. Maybe can't give you that for 82 games, but uh, come playoff time, Tikkanen is so valuable. Peter Zessel back on the ice for New Jersey, seeing a lot of early ice time in his first game of the series. And right now centering a line with Ralston and Guerin. Leach in his own zone, turning away from the forechecking of Zessel. Mark Messier up to Leach. He'll turn back. Adam Graves gives it back to Leach and Bukabu to an open wing, and Messier takes it over two lines offside. So 7.29 gone. It's been a wild start in New York. Experience on both these teams. The Rangers shut out by Florida, bounce back. The Rangers shut out by New Jersey, bounce back. And New Jersey down 2 nothing here, and it looked like panic could set in. What do they do? 40 seconds after the second goal. They bounce back and get a big goal, and now have settled this game into more of their style. It was wide open, and the last couple of shifts, the Devils have tried to slow it down and been pretty successful. Well, Coley Campbell making a late line change, so he does want the matchup of Doug Gilmore against Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky with Robitaille and Nicholas Sundstrom. 
Oh, Samuelson plays it around. Carpetson up to Sundstrom. One hands it ahead, and Gretzky back hands it to the devil line. Niedermeyer sending away Gilmore. Back for New Jersey. Here's Gilmore moving in, sliding it through, and Carpetson was there, and a penalty as I think it was all Samuelson took John McClain into the Ranger net. And O. Samuelson started skating right to the penalty box before Kerry Fraser made a motion to the box. Rangers John McClain goes to the net. Doug Gilmore is just trying to feed it through. Samuelson takes him, grabbed his stick, grabbed his arm, and ends up with the holding penalty or interference. I don't know which Kerry Fraser is going to call it. He's going to call it holding. Well, it's great to see Christopher Reeve here at MSG, great Ranger fan. Superman, and he has been a Superman. So we'll see the Devils first time on the power play tonight, 0 for 7 in game two, and that was really one of the big storylines of the Ranger victory. Bill Guerin taken to the boards by Tikkanen. Gilmore is out there. Niedemeyer and Chambers, the point men. Here's Gilmore on the near side shooting. Blocked by Leach. Niedemeyer fires. That's blocked by Messier. Niedemeyer again. Loose in front. And they're calling a hand pass as it was a little scrambly in the slot. And Mark Messier, who some feel might have a sore wrist, seemed to be wincing after that. Well, I think he took it in the chest on this one. Puck goes out to Niedemeyer. Out goes Messi, and yes, he takes it in the midsection, and your shoulder pads don't come all the way down, hitting the sternum like that. Messi at the bench. Messi did a great job. You talked about those seven power plays, Chris, that long two-man advantage that the Devils had. It was over a minute long. They never had a good scoring chance. Mark Messi was the key to that, winning face-offs and pursuing the puck. Now, what did you make of all the criticism of Jacques Lemaire for calling a timeout? Get to that in a moment as Niedermeyer plays it in. Here's Gilmore setting it up back for Chambers. The shot, and that whistles wide of the net, comes back to Niedermeyer. Watched by Graves. Gilmore takes a look, winds up. Screen in front provided by Guerin, but the shot well off target. Now it's Adam Graves, four short-handed goals on the year, and he fired it wide. Adam Graves, at the end of a shift, takes the long shot. Scott Niedermeyer played it very well, forced Graves wide, and Graves ended up missing the net. Now it's Chambers, gets to the red line, or did he? They're signaling a potential icing call, but the Devils get there first. Battle along the boards, Niedermeyer shooting, and that's just off the target. Messier after it, can't get it by Dave Ellett. He puts it to Ralston, and a quick shot turned aside by Richter. Now Carpetson, back to Messier. Holy quickly on him. Mark Messier lost it behind the net. They'll try the near side, and down it goes. What about the Lemaire criticism? I don't think it was justified. I think Jacques Lemaire did the right thing. His power play was struggling. He had a two-man advantage. He wanted to give instructions, called the timeout. And he was being criticized because he said the Rangers had a chance to rest. Well, you've got a two-man advantage. Who cares if they rest? Now you can see this first power play of the night for New Jersey is coming to an end. Randy McKay, the Devils goal scorer, dropping it back for Zelopukin. He's taken heavily into the boards by Eastwood. On the far side, Ellett's moved up. Rangers back at full strength as Graves tries to backhand it out and does past Ellett down the ice. We've passed the 10 minute mark, first period, and it's 2-1 Rangers on goals by Kretzky and Tikkanen. Randy McKay has replied for the Devils. Bruce Driver to Doug Lidster. There was an unsung hero in game two. Robitaille tied up by Ralston. And now Gretzky picks off a pass. He's knocked off the puck by Peterson. Gretzky knocked off the puck and the fans react to that. Lidster back in his own zone. Here's Sunster. Gretzky cruising at center. Takes the pass on the backhand and now circles back. Drops for Driver. His pass broken up by Gilmore. And back into the Ranger zone. Chopped down the ice by Robitaille. Danico hustles back to get it. And icing the call against New York. 
Well, Wayne Gretzky was knocked off the puck by Peterson, but it was Scott Niedemeyer that waved at Gretzky, and that's why the fans were complaining, wanted Kerry Fraser to make the call. After Here's Wayne Gretzky and Niedemeyer, the little touch there, and Wayne Gretzky goes back. That wasn't where the fans were booing. They were booing when Peterson knocked him off the puck, and then Niedemeyer gave him a little shot late. The Devils have to pay attention to Gretzky. He's off to a great start here. He sent Cordell in on a breakaway, got a goal himself, and we're just past the 10-minute mark, so why wouldn't you pay a little more attention to Gretzky? He called the Devils maybe the best defensive team ever assembled. Far more complimentary than back in 1983 about the Devils organization. That's the Mickey Mouse ears that year. That's a much different Devils team. 95 Stanley Cup champions. And they are usually airtight defensively, but the Rangers have got to them for two first period goals in this game. Now New Jersey works out to center. There's Bill Guerin ahead for Holik. The Devils look like they're trying to get Holik more ice time tonight. He's been kind of lost in the line matching of Jacques Lemaire. Old line gave the puck away. Messier speeds in, quick shot. Rodeur stopped that. And Messier always is dangerous on that off wing. We'll take a break. 8.22 to go. First period in New York. Mr. Commissioner, uh, Peter Carmonis has signed a letter of intent with Raleigh Durham. What do you think of the move of the Whalers to North Carolina? Well, obviously, we're never happy when we have to move a franchise, uh, but the situation in Hartford became hopeless, and this is going to be a good new market with a new building, and I think it's a good opportunity for the team to relocate. Are you of the understanding the Whalers may yet play one more year in Hartford because of their lease? Well, the uh, governor and Mr. Carmonis made a deal for the team to leave after this season, and uh, there now seems to be some second thoughts in the state about the deal. Hopefully everybody will act sensibly and the team will go because we certainly don't want a lame duck year if we can avoid it. Commissioner Bettman, thank you for your time. Thank you. Chris. Scott, the off-ice officials tonight are from Hartford or do we say they're from Carolina? The Hurricanes. Seven minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the opening period in New York. Game three and it's 2-1 Rangers. Robitaille going after it. Just got out of the way of a heavy hit. Now he'll forecheck. Stevens gives it away, and the Rangers come up with it. Spun back in. Ken Jernander seeing his first ship of this series. Jernander out there with Robitaille and Tikkanen. And now Peter Zessel back for New Jersey. A long shoot in on Richter, and Reed Simpson driving to the Ranger goaltender, and that will draw a reaction and a whistle. Now, is Kerry Fraser going to call a penalty here on Simpson for driving to the net? Now, Fraser's over-talking to Mike Richter. And I'm sure he's saying to Richter, well, okay, you hesitated before you fell on it, and then Simpson comes driving in. Richter's not the greatest puck handler in the world. Everybody knows that. So he hangs on, but he waited until the last minute. Simpson comes crashing in. Doug Lidster tried to handle him. And at the other end, Essa well, Brodeur bumps into Essa Tikkanen as he comes out. The goalies are a lot tougher than people give them credit for. We've seen in the Philadelphia series that you don't mess around with the goalies. Oh, some goalies. Some goalies, yes. Some goalies actually drop their stick when they get involved. Well, these two have been outstanding in the playoffs, but we will not have the 16th shutout of the 97 Stanley Cup playoffs in this game. Bill Guerin behind the net. Here's Gilmore now after it, hands it off. Ralston, quick shot, rebound, Ralston, backhand, and that went wide. Traffic around Richter again. And the Devils have certainly bounced back since the opening pair of goals by the Rangers. And an icing call against New York, and you can hear the fans' reaction. Shots on goal, 9-8 New Jersey. What a controversy after game two. Mark Messier with a hit on Doug Gilmore, stick right in the face. No call on that one. 
by Rob Schick. And the Devils did not send the tape in. Gary Bettman was at that game. And then later, uh, right at the end of the first period, Doug Gilmore takes a roughing penalty. And right after that hit, 24 seconds after that hit, the Rangers scored their power play goal. So many people felt that Messi came out with that mean streak that he can have, and it helped the Rangers win game two. I think Messi would be a pretty good poker player after the game. He said, I didn't have any idea who I hit on the play. <laughs> Gretzky and Gilmore on that faceoff, and it's Sundstrom trying to get it by Niedemeyer and does. Here's Gretzky with flatly loose on the right side, slowed up by Gilmore who came back nicely defensively. Now they battle along the boards and it's flatly trying to work it loose, and it does come free for Danico. 6.26 remaining, first period. Love by Samuelson and out at center, flatly touches it, and the hand pass called. Wayne Gretzky and Pat Flatley on a semi two on one and a good job by Doug Gilmore coming back and concentrating on Gretzky and Gilmore has not been able to put up the offensive numbers here in this year's playoffs but he's done a great job defensively. We saw him against Montreal and here against Wayne Gretzky. He comes and he doesn't bite for the stop and turn. Takes Gretzky, has the hand on him, strips him of the puck and the Devils are able to get it out. Messier and Carpenter renew their rivalry now. Ryan Leach to Jeff Bukaboom, rink wide, Messier full speed to the line, knocked down by Chambers, and now it's Graves trying to keep it in as players go sprawling. Chambers up to John McLean, in the middle for Bob Carpenter. The former Ranger hit the line, but it's offside as Zelopukin was in ahead of the play. Uh, Bobby Carpenter continues to thrive in the playoffs as a defensive forward for Jacques Lemaire. Good on faceoffs, good penalty killer. Well, you think of the number of times that Bob Carpenter's career has looked like it would have been over. He wears a shield because he was hit in the eye before he turned pro, shattered his kneecap, and just keeps bouncing back. Playing in his 125th Stanley Cup playoff game tonight, did not allow, was not on the ice for an even strength goal in the Montreal series, nor in the first two games of this series. I'll have to confirm this, but I think he was on for the second Ranger goal. That great pass from Messier to Tikkanen. Along the boards, the Devils battling for it. Reed Simpson was knocked down, and the Rangers flip it out to center. Cortnell going after it. Lie low to lie. Up ahead, Bobby Holik without the helmet. The Rangers clear it back. Now Odelide pounds it in. 5.35 to play in the opening period. 2-1 New York. Devils with a slight edge in shots at 9-8. Cortnell back in his own zone. Dodged a check from Thomas, got rid of it in the far corner. Holik is after it. Lidster up with it. And Doug Lidster ahead to Flatley and flatly bounces it down the ice. Puck didn't get to the line, so no icing, and the fans respond to that. Thought it should have been waved off earlier than that. Karpetsev now sets it up, and Gretzky will circle the net. Ulf Samuelson. Looking for 99 at center, broken up by Zezel. He turns it back with Ralston. Peter Zezel setting it up. Pass picked off by Robotai. Now Niedermeyer moves up. Knocked it away from Gretzky. Quick shot, Richter down. And Karpetsev buries the man in front. And the Devils unable to get it by Mike Richter from the pile up in front of the net. Controversy, talking about Garth Snow's equipment and picked up by Ted Nolan, and I'm sure Grace will have things to say about that. And from the files tonight, look who's featured from his coaching days. It looks like Don Cherry. I'm guessing on that one. He looks so dapper. Don Cherry created controversy? No. No, no. 4.36 away from Don and Ron in the coach's corner. Face off in the Rangers zone as Sundstrom digs in against Gilmore, and it slides to Gretzky. Carpetsev now, penalty coming up against the Devils, as Brodeur gloves it down, and for the first time tonight, 
We'll see the Ranger power play. And it's a holding the stick call going against Doug Gilmore. And Doug Gilmore is usually very good at getting away with something like that. He's been around so long. He knows all the little tricks here. Sundstrom ties the draw. Gilmore hangs on to the stick, lets it go. But Gary Fraser was very alert on the play and made the call. So the Rangers, one for four in game two. Get a chance with a man advantage to reestablish their two goal lead. Number one power play during the regular season is John McClain confers with Kerry Fraser. You can see the power play has not nearly been as effective in the postseason for New York. You mentioned it in game two, John, the injury to Kovalev has had this power play unit in uh, less than 100% fashion for the last few months. Well, Kovalev was their guy to gain the blue line. He has great speed, good hands, good long reach, and he was the guy that used to bring the puck, gain the blue line, and then they'd be able to set up. Well, number 229 of Mark Messier's brilliant postseason. Just one player in major sports has played more games in the postseason. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Abdul that looks like a picture when Kareem Abdul was Lou Alcindor. That goes way back. And if Messier and the Rangers can get by the Devils, this could eclipse Jabbar this year. Driver plays it around. It comes to Tikkanen. He's being hacked at by Scott Stevens. In behind the net, Graves to Messier, back out to Leach. Leach and Driver are the point men. Ryan Ralston, a penalty killer, was Zezel. Puck went off the skate, high off the glass. Zezel went sprawling. And it's Graves on the puck against Zezel. Zezel down again. And Stevens has it. Chambers behind the net. Got it to Ralston. And the Devils are able to work it out. Good job by the Devils, and especially Peter Zezel. He hasn't played in a long time. Comes out, Jacques Lemaire using him as a penalty killer. A short shift, but a very effective shift. Minute left in the Ranger power play. Gretzky to the line. Nice pass, left side, Leach. He'll turn back, flip it back behind the net. Gretzky in front. Oh, Robitaille stopped by Brodeur on another great feed by Gretzky. That puck off somebody in front, and it goes high into the corner. Messier took a high stick from Chambers, and there'll be another penalty. And 41 seconds remaining in Gilmore's penalty. And look, Robitaille gives Wayne Gretzky a little tap. And that's Russ Cortnall who got the high stick in the face. Robitaille gave Gretzky a little tap on the pads for setting him up. The nice little backhand pass out in front. Chambers tries to reach for the stick and misses the stick and catches Cortnall on the side of the head. And that's an easy call for Kerry Fraser to make. And only two minutes for Chambers. And Chambers is lucky that Cortnall's not a bleeder. That would have been the four-minute high-sticking penalty, but Chambers only gets two. Well, more Gretzky magic. What a pass this was. Another little backhand touch pass to Luke Robitaille, but Robitaille's on his backhand. Doesn't get much on it. Brodeur makes the save. There's Russ Cordell checking his teeth out. Well, John, a critical portion of game two was the two-man advantage for 70 seconds for New Jersey late in the game. And now the Rangers have a two-man advantage for 41 seconds with 3.08 to go in the first period. Devils win the faceoff. Leach keeps it in. Got it to Gretzky. Back to Karpetsev. That went off Niedermeyer, but it's held in by Leach. Devils fail to clear. Gretzky to Leach. Now Gretzky. Karpetsev, and he blasted that wide. Got a Ranger hop off the stanchion, but nevertheless, the Devils are able to get it down the ice. Well, now 15 seconds to go. That all started with a Bobby Carpenter draw win, clean draw back, and the Rangers never really had control. Back in they come. Carpets have placed it around. Messier, far side. Leach and Gretzky at the points. Carpets have again. That was way off target. Gilmore returns. So it's a one-man advantage now. 
And really no good chance in the 41 seconds as Gilmore starts back shorthanded. Niedermeyer, that went off an ankle to the net, loose in front. And Niedermeyer just shot it wide. So the Devils get the best chance shorthanded. Well, I hope Alexander Karpatsev was trying to bank it off somebody because he had two shots that missed by at least 10 feet and it looked like he was trying to hit somebody in front of the net. Under two minutes to go in the first period. 45 seconds left in the penalty. Gretzky from behind the net puts it in front. Here's Bruce Driver on the backhand. Back to Gretzky in his office. He'll leave it and get it back again. Graves is in front. Robitaille cheating down. He gets it back out to Driver. And Leach across to Robitaille, hopped over his stick. Fans getting a little impatient here at MSG. Leach plays it back behind the net, broken up by Danico. Up to Gilmore, and the Devils will get it out and down the ice with under 10 seconds remaining. Chambers getting set to return as Cortnall takes off. Speeding in. Here's Cortnall. Too much speed behind the net. Centered it. And there's Chambers out of the penalty box. Back on the ice with under a minute to go. John McClain into the New York zone. Matt Flatley takes over for New York. Kept in by Holy. Flatley held him up. That's McLean centering it. And the Rangers intercept and start back. Flatley to center, and he flips that into the crowd. 37.6 seconds to play in the first period. Bobby Carpenter, we talked about him. Jacques Lemaire using him as the forward to start that penalty kill, and it's not because of his speed. Bobby Carpenter has lost most of his speed, but he's a smart, smart penalty killer, always in good position. And the Rangers with just one shot on goal during the two-man advantage. The shots are even at 10 apiece in the final minute of the opening period. 2-1 New York. Holy. Up to Thomas. He lost control of it. Now Chambers plays it ahead, and there's Tikkanen for the big hit on Holik. Sundstrom knocked down. And Chambers from behind his net. Up to Holik. Messier waiting for him there. He'll keep it in. Peterson trying to get it out. Can't do it. Holik took a swipe at Sundstrom. Final shot of the period is high. That'll do it for the first 20. Gretzky and Tikkanen scoring for the Rangers. McKay for the Devils. And after 20 in New York, 2-1 Rangers. Mark, this wasn't the way any game in this series was supposed to start, uh, given all the talk about checking. How do you explain that offensive explosion in the first period? Well, I think it was only a matter of time. Both teams have some guys that can uh, put the puck in the net. Uh, we had some great chances. Both teams had great chances in the first game, so it was only a matter of time before some goals started going. How about 99? Didn't he have it going to start this game? Yeah, it's a huge lift for us when he uh, comes out like that. He fires everybody else up on our team, and uh, he's been playing great all playoffs. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Mark. We'll have second period action next on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Three of the Devils Rangers series. After 20 minutes, it's 2-1 New York. The quick goals all at even strength. Gretzky and Tikkanen and in that goal by the Devils. 40 seconds after the 2-0 Ranger lead. A big one for New Jersey. Down by just one as we start the second. Here's Brian Leach. Throwing it towards the net. That hits Stevens at the side of the net. And now he'll play it ahead. Bobby Carpenter starts back with Zelipukin. And John McClain at the line. Offside the call against New Jersey. In the first intermission, Scott Oak had a chance to chat with Doug Gilmore of the Devils. Doug, you're going great defensively, but everybody acknowledges for the Devils to win this series that you have to get some points. You're feeling the pressure to score? Well, not really. As far as uh, you want to go out and you want to produce, um, we've had a lot of chances, especially last game that we uh, we were defeated, but tonight I think we're just going to be kind of a, a lunch bucket team. We're going to go work hard and, and try to create chances like we did in the, in the first there after they scored two goals. Yeah, how about that? Trailing by one uh, after one, how does that change the game plan for a defensive team? Well, this is good, actually, for us to start. We knew that uh, we had to come in here weather the storm in the first period. They came out, they got two big goals, we made some mistakes, but uh, the guys came right back. 
Gilmore without a shot on goal in that first period. And now we've got uh, Kerry Fraser on the phone. I don't know what this is about unless there is a problem with the clock. That it's, usually is what happens. It's not about video replay. Ten different Devils with shots on goal. The ten different Rangers with shots on goal in the first period. Well, it's not too serious. Kerry Fraser was smiling. Now I think we're ready to go. Now, do the pizza companies still guarantee that 30-minute delivery? <laughs> Be ready for the second intermission. Kerry Fraser ordering for the officiating crew. Yeah, maybe he is. Well, just in case there's overtime tonight, you have to be prepared. That's right. Here's Mike Eastwood for New York. Left wing feet for Flatley. Courtnell racing in on the right side for Brodeur. Always smooth stick handling ability of the goaltender, and he got it out quickly. And at center ice. Glad you mentioned that, Chris, because it's harder here at Madison Square Garden to be a good puck handling goaltender because the boards are hard to read. They're in and out so often that it makes it much more difficult. Now Courtnell checked by Dennis Peterson. Peterson is playing wing tonight on a line with Bobby Holik and Steve Thomas. He has been playing center for most of these playoffs. Puck sent down the ice. And O-line back to get it as both teams make changes. Ellett to hit to Thomas. Gilmore tried to hold up, but both he and Guerin were being ahead of the play. Doug Gilmore talking about coming from behind with Scott Oak. And it's easier for a team like the New Jersey Devils when they have as much time as they have here. They were down 2-0 early, but they got that quick goal to get back into the game. And they can continue because they know they've got two periods just to grind it out and wait for another Randy McKay-type goal. Now Gilmore playing in game 144 tonight. The most experienced playoff performer. And of course the Stanley Cup with the Calgary Flames. Devils say that they're even a more patient team on the road. 23 home wins during the season. Long shot on Richter. They won 22 games away from the Meadowlands Arena. The Devils trying to take advantage of Mike Richter's puck handling deficiencies, all those long shots right at Mike Richter and trying to force the Ranger goaltender into handling the puck. And so far, Mike Richter has decided to hold on to most of them. And his team has been a little better on face-offs tonight again. We have the face-offs at 9-6 in favor of the Rangers. Well, Doug Gilmore didn't sound too concerned about his lack of Offensive production, 12 games without a goal now. Gilmore's been matched up against Nicholas Sundstrom on the faceoffs tonight, not Wayne Gretzky. There's a high shot taken off the chest of Richter. Sundstrom tries to move it out. It's kept in by Ralston. He had four shots on goal for the Devils in the first period. Now Esatikinen will take control. Leaves it for Sundstrom. Out at center, Sundstrom sends it into the New Jersey zone. Up it comes to Ralston, and there's a penalty coming up. And Kerry Fraser is sending Ken Danico off. And it's a retaliation penalty. Nicholas Sundstrom went into Ken Danico, and Ken Danico reacted after the hit with the little cross check, and Danico is going off. Nicholas Sundstrom is a good four checker. He takes the body. Here he comes on Danico. Good solid hit. And Danico gets the cross-checking penalty for that little strafe of Sundstrom. Nicholas Sundstrom has taken a lot of face-offs. He did in game one. Here he is in game three. Ties the face-off and then stays with Gilmore. That's the defensive responsibility position. Hold on to the stick. He didn't get called. Gilmore got called in the first period for doing exactly the same thing at the other end. So Danico off for cross-checking. 153. The Rangers were 0 for 2 on the power play in the first period and only managed one shot and that included 40 seconds of a two-man advantage. Here's Cortnell racing into the New Jersey zone got by Scott Stevens who went down it's kept in by Bruce Driver along the boards Cortnell in behind the net for Gretzky. Here's Gretzky trying to work it back Driver shot it 
That hit Robitai in front, and it's played out by Carpenter down the ice. Well, part of the problem the Rangers are having with the man advantage are missed shots. We had them with 10 shots directed towards Martin Brodeur that went wide. The goaltender never had to stop him. And this time, Carpets have not out there, and he was perhaps the worst defender in that first period. Driver back in his own zone, chased by Gilmore. And they'll leave it for Leach. Messier's out there now. Gretzky and Graves also up front. Gretzky takes the pass. Over the line for Leach. That hit Gilmore, who takes Graves to the boards. And the Devils get it back out again. Ralston giving chase. Now Niedermeyer will hop up as well. The Devils look for a turnover. Messier comes back to help out. Messier winds up past Gilmore. It's Adam Graves over the line. Here's Graves playing it around far side for Leach. Hit by Gilmore. Messier let it go for Gretzky. Now back into the corner for Messier. Hey! The Ranger captain to the line. Long shot just off the mark. Carpetson's back out there now. And he'll take it. And Carpetson again misses the net right in the middle. Lots of Ranger traffic in front. Just a wide shot. Messier knocked off the puck by Niedermeyer. And that'll do it as Danico gets set to return. Rangers 0 for 3 as they squander another chance to add to their lead. Here's a pass for Flatley, long shot, blocker by Brodeur. Hortnell spinning away from a check, trying to come out in front. Nifty move past Niedemeyer, and he lost it. Peter Zezel plays it around. There's Bill Garrett. Hortnell knocked down, a little slow to get up as he exits the devil's zone. Mike Eastwood at center. Up ahead off the skate of Flatley. Zezel comes back with Garrett. And that pass broken up. Oh, Samuelson's on the move for New York. Here's Samuelson in with Flatley. Shot, Brodeur steers it aside. Eastwood can't find the rebound. And the Devils start back. Too far for Garrett. It slides into the Rangers zone. Richter out of the net. Garrett flying in there after it. And it's shot out by Courtnell, who's knocked down by Reed Simpson. Rodeur had trouble with it, lost it to Robitaille. There's Gretzky centering it. It comes back to the line. It'll be kept in by Driver. Danico lost it. It comes in front, and Gilmore's there to scoop it into the Ranger bench. 5 6 into the second period. 2-1 New York. Powers International Man of Mystery. Everybody knows your passions, hockey. Mike, what do you think of the series in this game? Well, this is a, a, a well, first of all, it's been a great game so far, but it's kind of like, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. It's like six degrees of the Toronto Maple Leafs and six degrees of the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, I see like uh, about 10 X Leafs out there, including Dougie Gilmore. Listen, of all the things that you've done in your great career, where does this appearance on Hockey Night in Canada rate? This is huge. I love being on Hockey Night Canada. This is awesome. Hockey Night in Canada rules. You know, there's one thing we haven't heard out there tonight. Car. No, wait. <laughs> there's legislation in the NHL against it now, of course. <laughs> so you can't do it. Mike, thanks for your time. Good to see you. Not at all. Game on, eh? Game on, eh? Austin Powers doing very well. The number two movie last weekend made over $10 million for Mike Myers. And you knew he'd bring up the blue and white. Well represented in this series. Here's Bobby Holy. Up ahead to Dennis Peterson. Niedermeyer jumps into the rush. Got Niedermeyer in and the backhand wide. Driver may have got a stick on that. Dave Ellett plays it back in deep. And it's Lidster. Ford Driver up at center for Essa Tikkanen. Into the devil zone and Brodeur. Plays it off for Ellen. Up to Steve Thomas. Cross ice pass. Messier almost picked it off. Bobby Holik now. We're past the six minute mark of the second period. Brian Leach comes up with the puck. Looking to center for Adam Graves. Here's Graves. Bothered by Zelopukin. Swings wide against Odeline. Now Messier in looking for it. He got it back to Graves. Adam Graves tries to muscle in front. And Odeline pulled him down. And there'll be another Devils power play, or penalty, and a Ranger power play. Lyle Oline made a good play on the first rush by Adam Graves. He angled him off to the corner, but they couldn't come up with a puck. 
Graves had position. Lyle O'Line ends up with one hand on his stick, reaches around. Here's O'Line angling Graves off. Now Graves has got nowhere to go. Goes to the corner, but Graves shows his strength, battles back, battles back. Ends up with the puck and then fights off O'Line. He has position. O'Line has to reach around with his free hand. Takes Graves down and takes a penalty. He didn't like the way Graves went down so easily, and you can see O'Line's face, but he did reach around with that right hand and ends up with the holding penalty. All well, the power plays in the series are combined two for 22. Rangers getting their fourth chance of the game. Roll the tie, and Brodeur came across. They score! And Zizekinen! to get it on the net. Luke Robitaille just snaps it, gets it on the net. Brodeur can't handle it. Wayne Gretzky eyes in the back of his head again, passes it back to Asatikinen, and Tikkanen just snaps it through. The shot by Robitaille, not how hard, but where? It gets through, Brodeur can't handle it. Perfect pass again by Gretzky. Backhand to Tikkanen, and it goes. Brodeur never recovered after that original shot. He was off balance, he couldn't handle it, and then it went right through him. Gretzky has a pair of points, Tikkanen and two goals. And now Tikkanen and Gretzky have 10 of the 18 goals scored by the Rangers in these playoffs. Five for each, and it's 3-1 New York. 6.41, the time of the goal. And the Devils find themselves in a two-goal hole again. Steve Thomas after the puck. New Jersey answered quickly the last time the Rangers had a two-goal lead. Let's see if they go right back to the attack. Odeline, who was in the penalty box when Tikkanen scored, back out now. Holy to Ellick. He'll send it into the New York zone. Doug Wilkster plays it ahead. Kept in by Ellick. There's the shot. They score! And they answer back again. Dennis Peterson may have been the last man to touch it. Nicholas Sundstrom couldn't get that puck out. Sundstrom was out with Kerry Fraser on the side. Stopped by Mike Richter. Doug Lister fires it around. Your winger has to get this puck out. Now Sundstrom gets tied up with Kerry Fraser. Here comes the shot. Steve Thomas is there. And I think Steve Thomas is going to get credit for that goal. He tipped it. It hits Mike Richter. It's up and over, there's Peterson. Sundstrom can't get to it, here's the shot from Ellett. Steve Thomas gets his stick on it. Does Peterson before it goes in? I don't think so. I think Steve Thomas is gonna get credit. Well, it would be Thomas's luck of late if they do give it to Peterson, but that'll be a huge relief off the shoulders of Thomas, who has been quite open about how he's lost his scoring confidence. That goal, by the way, 45 seconds after the Rangers had taken a two goal lead. It took only 40 seconds in the first period for the Devils to score after the Rangers led by two. And we'll wait for the official. Score by number 32, Steve Thomas. They are giving it to this Thomas. To Dave Ellis, time 726. Thomas is first. So no goals in 14 for Steve Thomas before tonight, but the nice deflection. And he has New Jersey back within one at three to two. A shot by Dave Ellett, again, not how hard, but where. Ellett just gets it through, and Thomas gets enough of it to pull it back. Richter was well out, had the angle, but Thomas pulled it back, and it went short side on Richter, off his shoulder, and just barely made it over the line. Well, Steve Thomas, 310 goals in his NHL career, had not scored since March 27th, and that came in a game against the New York oh. Rangers. So it's three to two. And the momentum with the Devils right now as Gilmore comes back in. Here's McKay, quick shot, 
and two big stops by Mike Richter. A loosey-goosey defense by the New York Rangers and momentum has changed to the New Jersey Devils. Nice little pass by Doug Gilmore to get this chance created for Randy McKay, Chris Cross. The Rangers don't pick it up. Brian Leach tries to pick off the pass and lets McKay have a second whack at it and Mike Richter makes his two best saves of this game. Leach tries to go for the puck. Doesn't take McKay and McKay has his second crack and Mike Richter got the leg out to make the save. Well, after 40 minutes in our second intermission, Ron McLean will get to the bottom of the firing of Don Hay and the Phoenix staff today as he chats with Bobby Smith. That'll be an interesting interview. I think a lot of people in New York, when they got the news today, were very surprised, as I'm sure there were some shockwaves right across the NHL with the announcement from Phoenix earlier today. Back in the Rangers zone. Played around for Gretzky. Niedermeyer stepped up and got a piece of Gretzky. Kept in by New Jersey. Gilmore now goes after it, and he just missed Karpatsev with a check. Gilmore has it behind the net. Tries to center it. It bounced off a Ranger defenseman, and it will be cleared by Samuelson, who took a hit from Niedermeyer. Devils taking it to the Rangers right now a bit after the second New Jersey goal. It's 3-2 Rangers as we approach the nine-minute mark of the second period. Up to Gilmore, he let it go to center. Messier had it there, and we've got a penalty coming up. And down goes Bukaboom. Uh, Bukaboom was taking the original penalty, and then Steve Thomas came in and hit Bukaboom. And I think Steve Thomas is going to go along with Bukaboom. And Bukaboom was setting himself up to try and get one of the Devils. He knew he was going off, and Steve Thomas came in and took care of it, takes the penalty. Jacques Lemaire looks on. I don't think Jacques Lemaire will really mind this. Here's Bukaboom. He's going off with the hit. Steve Thomas comes in and hits Bukaboom, and you have to have your players standing up for each other. Four-on-four four situation. Bukaboom manhandling his man along the boards. That's Doug Gilmore, and you don't manhandle Doug Gilmore. Steve Thomas comes in, that's a good hit. Take that penalty, you're not gonna be short-handed. And remember, when you hit Doug Gilmore, everybody's gonna be there. So Thomas is also in the penalty box. And you can phone crowd noise, one 900 870 And for 95 cents, you can voice your opinion on anything. You can voice your opinion on that hit from Steve Thomas on Jeff Bukaboom. You have to be 18 years or older or have your parents' permission and spend your 95 cents and maybe an opinion on the Raleigh-Durham situation or the Don Hay situation. Uh, I was kind of surprised. I thought Don Hay was going to get fired in December when John Paddock was, going, was let go. The Coyotes were struggling and... It was John Paddock who let go, and I thought once the Coyotes made the playoffs, Don Hay was going to be safe, but not the case. As a former Whaler, you might not have minded the move to Raleigh. <laughs> I enjoyed Hartford when we were there. We sold out all the time, and luxury boxes weren't in vogue as much back then. Four on four hockey now with Bukaboom and Thomas in the box, and Messier's shot. That one was blocked. It comes back to Driver. Here's the shot bouncing through. Rodeur the save and the rebound worked out by the Devils to John McLean. Up there with Chambers and he lost it to Messier. Chambers not interested in going too deep in a four on four situation. Captain Messier starts slowly back and just plays it deep as he heads to the New York bench. And we hit the 10 minute mark of the second period. 3 2 New York. Chambers over the line. Watched by Gretzky. Stays with it. Garen behind the net. Perpets it there for the Rangers. Samuelson bodies Ralston. And Eastwood comes away. Over to Kerpitzev. Back it goes to Eastwood. Here's Kerpitzev jumping up in the rush. Just missed the pass. Gretzky tried to center it. And that was picked off by Garen. Too far for Ralston. And this will be icing against the Devils. Tessa Tikkanen has a pair of goals tonight. One set up by Mark Messier, the other by Wayne Gretzky. 
And he already has a pair of overtime goals. He has the famous net cam goal. In and out. Ah, you can hear the clank of the net cam, and I think that's why a lot of people didn't think that went in. And then in Florida, in overtime, the first one was here at Madison Square Garden, the overtime goal, and then that last one in Florida to end that series. He's been Mr. Overtime, five in his career. Bruce Driver lets his shot go, and again, just get it through. Driver gets it through, it bounces, and that's a good save by Martin Brodeur. Changed directions twice. Shots now 16-15 in favor of the Rangers. Rangers win the faceoff. Leach puts it through. Brodeur made the save and the rebound cleared to center. Here goes Gilmore. Keeping in on his back. Zelopukin over the line. Niedermeyer up and Zelopukin shot. Off target. Niedermeyer along the board. Centered it. Richter, I don't think he saw Gilmore. And Gilmore almost knocked it by him. Right from a face-off, the New York Rangers get a good chance, and at the other end, Scott Niedemeyer jumps up into the play, and he really has been the offense for the New Jersey Devils. When he's on the ice, they've created some scoring chances. The Rangers haven't been able to handle that extra man coming late. Doug Gilmore, as you said, Chris, came from behind the net, almost scored, and that's a ticket. Why is he so effective? Because he'll pay the price. Goes to the net, just missed that rebound. Boy, can Scott Niedermeyer skate, and we're treated to Brian Leach's offensive talents, but you wonder if this guy was unleashed another year or two if he couldn't be in that same category. There's Niedermeyer again testing Richter. Missed on the short side, and the penalty is coming up. And it looks like Messier going off as he was tying up Peter Zezel in front of the net. And Mark Messier has some words for Kerry Fraser. Mark Messier is going off for holding the stick. And we've seen this called a couple of times. Doug Gilmore got one in the first period, right from a faceoff. Here's Mark Messier. After the faceoff there, he's got the grab on Zezel's stick, the left hand. Let's it go, but had torn the stick right out of Zezel's hand and ends up with the holding the stick penalty. And so New Jersey gets a chance with the power play. The Rangers have a power play goal tonight. And the Devils have 10 in the postseason. Holy Campbell's looked very uneasy after seeing his team give up quick goals after two goal leads had been established. Well, it's hard to tell with Coley Campbell when they were ahead 2-0. Jacques Lemaire the same. It's hard to tell who's ahead, who's trailing by the expression of the two coaches. Zezel stays out on the power play, four on three. And from the battle, Tikkanen gets it to the line and out. And now it's five on four as Thomas and Bukaboom return. Zezel goes to the bench and Gilmore comes on for New Jersey. And they'll have to go back to get the puck. Lyle line takes a look. He's on a point with Dave Ellett. Gilmore's up front with Thomas and McLean. John McLean without a shot on goal in this game, and he's the Devils' leading scorer in the playoffs. Thomas swings it right side, and we've got more penalties. McLean was all tied up in front of the New Jersey bench. And he's going to get the holding penalty, and he had Nicholas Sundstrom pinned against the boards in front of the Devils' bench, and he's going to go for holding. Now this isn't a bad play by McLean, taking the chance, reaches around, grabs Sundstrom, and had he let him go right away, I think he would have been all right. But he continued to pin him against the boards and ends up with a holding penalty. Have to pin him for three seconds. Yes, that's right. So that came 41 seconds into the power play, and McLean sits down. I wonder how frustrating that is for Lemaire. That's uh, one power play squandered. They also were ready to go on a power play, and Steve Thomas took a penalty that you didn't think was a bad one, but that's two power plays that have gone awry for New Jersey here in the second period. I still don't think that was a bad penalty. Steve Thomas canceling that power play when Doug Gilmore was hit. When your star players hit, you better respond. If somebody did, Steve Thomas 
played four on four hockey. And they're back to four on four. Eight minutes left in the second period. Two teams have exchanged goals. We'll pile up there between Gilmore and Graves as the puck comes up ice. Ralston over the line, sends it across. A pass back for Ellett broken up from the Rangers. We'll try to break out. Stopped by Gilmore. Gilmore lost it at the Ranger line, and now Adam Graves will wind up. Here's Graves against Ralston. Into the devil zone, lost it, and Ralston played it back out to center. 25 seconds left in Messier's penalty, and then New York will have a power play for just over a half minute. Leach at center. Over to Tikkanen, who has two goals tonight. Gretzky has the other, and he's also up front. Nessa Tikkanen. Back to Leach. Stopped up by Chambers. Leach gets it back. Tried to put it in front. That hit a devil. Tikkanen was upended by Stevens. Play continues. Bobby Carpenter back hands it to the Ranger line. And now New York with the power play. 30 seconds to go. Tikkanen fires it. That went high. Messier in on Stevens. It comes around for Leach. Gilmore watching Leach. Across to Gretzky. Gretzky sizes it up, throws it across. Now Leach has it. At the line. Ryan Leach wheeling. Plays it back for Tikkanen. Now it's Gretzky. Nine seconds of the power play. Leach side of the net. Turns it back to Gretzky. Takes the shot. Devils at full strength. Tekin and fires. Rebound. It's loose and McLean there out of the penalty box to loft it out to center. 6.06 to play in the second. It's 3-2 New York. Long pass for Gretzky. Into the New Jersey zone. Played by Brodeur. Finally there for New York. He took a hit and Bobby Holik starts back. Here's Holik. Over the line, Thomas. His shot doesn't get through. Flatley plays it around far side. Chambers there. Here's a pass in front. Peterson back, hands it wide. Dennis Peterson looking for his first ever Stanley Cup playoff goal. At the line, broken up, Cortnell. One man back, it's on line. Cortnell shooting, stopped by Brodeur. Rebound, side of the net. Cortnell looking to center it. Russ Cortnell, hauled down, and the Devils try to break out at center ice. Litzter's there for New York. Rangers start back. It's Gretzky winding up, and what a stop by Martin Brodeur on the blast from number 99. Well, Martin Brodeur with the most spectacular save of the night. Pat Flatley drives the defense back. Wayne Gretzky takes the shot. Bruce Driver's going to the net, but there is no rebound. Martin Brodeur behind his pad makes the save. Brodeur, good position again. Three feet out, reaches back behind him, gets that big glove out, and there's Bruce Driver driving to the net looking for a rebound. We talked on Sunday about his off day habit of going to a movie. He didn't go to see Austin Powers. Went to see breakdown. Doesn't see many breakdowns in front of the New Jersey in the New Jersey defense. Although there's one here inside of the net for Tikkanen. And Brodeur covered it long enough for a face-off. Dad, you worked late. Title to wonder what might have been. His sends took the Sabres to seven. Had you beaten them, you'd be playing the Devils. Uh, make this series tougher to watch. Well, it does, for sure. Uh, we thought we'd be get to this series and play the Devils, but unfortunately we lost. You know, if you'd play the Devils, two teams playing the trap, that could have been the first series in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs with no goal scored. Great hockey, though. <laughs> <laughs> Quick comment on the firing of Don Hay today. Well, it's unfortunate. I thought Don, Don did a good job, finished fifth in the uh, division, and uh, it's unfortunate. Thanks for your time, Jock. Jock Martin, another former goalie in the broadcast booth for this series as the Rangers came close on that last attack. Mike Eastwood at the side of the net on his forehand, couldn't get it up and by Martin Brodeur. We're down to 4.04 to go, second period, 3-2 Rangers. Thomas on the attack and a shot there up 
onto the chest of Mike Richter and sticks get high in front of the Ranger goaltender. Devils did a better job in the first period driving to the net after the play to try and bother Mike Richter. Doug Lidster had Bobby Holik all tied up. This long shot after the pass, Holik makes the pass and tries to go to the net. Doug Lidster is not that big, but he's really strong and he keeps Holik to the outside. Here's the Ranger chance. Nice pass by Russ Cortnall to Mike Eastwood. And he doesn't get much on it. He hits the side of the net. I thought maybe Brodeur made the save, but Eastwood just couldn't direct it towards the net. Martin Brodeur, talking about his father, gets a chance to watch the games on Hockey Night in Canada. His satellite dish doesn't pick up those other networks, and he was quite happy that we were continuing on with the Rangers Devil Series. Denny at home in Montreal watching it. Another member of the Goaltenders Union. Under four minutes left. Here in the second period at Madison Square Garden. 3-2 New York as Samuelson plays it into the devil zone and Robotai took a hit from Danico. Niedermeyer give it to Garen, who gives it back to Niedermeyer. Off the boards and out to center. Karpitsev is there looking for Gretzky by him. And Martin Brodeur up ahead with a nice pass to Garen. Here's Bill Guerin. Got away from the stick check of Sundstrom. Powering his way through. A hit from Samuelson, and they will hold it for a face-off in the Rangers' zone. Oh, that was a good play by Samuelson as Karpitsev let Guerin go right by him. Karpitsev tried for the hit at the blue line, and Guerin went right by him, and then Samuelson comes across to help out his partner. Guerin sees him coming, gets the elbow up in Samuelson's face, and then Samuelson retaliates. And down they go. Samuelson knows he wants the whistle, falls on the puck and gets that whistle. Aaron was on the receiving end for much of game two, so he's dishing it out here tonight. And you can see the wound of the second game. That happened about the first minute of game two, Sunday afternoon. Gilmore behind the net trying to center it. Adam Graves chops it off the boards and down the ice. Now a pass ahead for Zelopukin and Gilmore. Just too far for Gilmore. Messier now stood up by Stevens. Zelopukin rolls it to the Ranger line and Leach will take over. And that puck is out of play. 2.47 to go. Second period in New York. Mike Eastwood looked over to the bench to see where Coley Campbell wanted him to draw that puck. It's in no man's land. It's not in the usual spot. The Rangers trying to get their defensive alignment. Devils got it back to the point. Litzter plays it around and flatly. Tried to hit Eastwood with the pass. Went too far. Own line. Had a blowout in the New Jersey zone. And the Devils are able to recover and get it out. Driver back to get it in his own zone. Hounded by Steve Thomas. Driver's lost the glove. Holik up with it. Centering it. McKay shot. That ends up in the corner. Litzter off the boards hard and down the ice. This will be icing against the Rangers as Ellett touches it with 2.10 to play. Jim Ramsey looking at Jeff Bukaboom and you wonder when the player is flexing his arm and his hand, whether it's a shoulder or a wrist problem. And Jeff has had some shoulder problems in his career. Mike Volga looks on it. It has been a tough series. Wayne Gretzky was cut by Bill Guerin in game one. John McClain cut in game two. And yet these players don't have visors on. Those cuts very close to the eyes. There's Billy Guerin, another one right above the eye. Oh, we're told that Robbie Schick, he was another one. Robbie Schick had the Charlie horse. John, we're told that Jeff Bukaboom hyperextended his elbow just a few minutes ago off a face-off in the New York zone. And Lyle Odeline has gone to the New Jersey dressing room. Well, I think Odeline will go for his skates. The way you said he blew a tire, the way he went yeah. down there, that looked like it was a skate problem. From the face-off, quick shot from the point. And Niedemeyer was just off target. Danico moves up. Now it's Gilmore as the Devils supply the pressure late in the second period. Gilmore, quick pass in front. And Gretzky's there to gobble it up for New York. His pass for Robitaille broken up by Danico. 
Out at center ice now, Niedermeyer with it. Right side pass. It goes to Ralston, Perfitsiv on him. Gilmore with Robitaille hanging on his back, and Robitaille ends up on top of Gilmore, who threw an elbow. Danico along the boards. To the net and off the side of the net. Picked up by Gilmore in front, and Ralston missed the pass, and it'll slide down the ice. Boy, Gilmore almost as dangerous as Wayne Gretzky behind that net. Niedemeyer, long shot on Richter. Gilmore just doesn't have the supporting cast. He's thrown two or three good passes out there right by some of his own players, and they haven't made contact. There's a puck knocked down. Zelopukin a chance and a shot right on Richter from the turnover in the New York zone with exactly a minute to play in the second. And there's Bruce Driver standing in front of Mike Richter. And I said after game two that Bruce Driver signed a week and a half after the Stanley Cup win. There's Bill Guerin and Ole Samuelson. Well, Driver didn't sign until August 24th after he had won the Stanley Cup with the Devils. And here's Wayne Gretzky high in the slot defensively. Takes Brian Ralston. Comes back deep, realizes danger, and that's that nice pass by Doug Gilmore and Wayne Gretzky doing the job defensively. So Bruce Driver, not a week and a half, it was two months after he'd won the Cup with the Devils that he signed his new contract with the Rangers. Free Glad agent, no compensation. Glad you set the record straight. Thank you, thank you. From the faceoff, Devils control. Here's a shot that ends up in the corner. Zelopukin for checking. That's John McLean up with it. McLean tried to hook it in front. Messier there to intercept. Out it comes to Graves over two lines. The offside call. The Devils just had a long, dangerous shot from the blue line that went over top of the net. And we keep saying, hit the net, hit the net. Try and get it through and hit the net. Well, the Devils get one through here. Had it hit the net, it's in. Here's the shot. Comes through. It's high. It's deflected. Richter has absolutely no idea. He doesn't move until it hits the glass. When he hears it hit the glass, then he turns around. Nice shot from our net can. There's Richter. He goes out. He sees the guy take the shot, but he can't find it. Look, look, look. Where is it? It hits the glass, and then he turns around. Oh, good thing that didn't hit the net. Here's a centering pass by Thomas off a skate. Steve Thomas again in the corner, tried to whip it back to the point, and he sent it by his defenseman. Scott Siemens has to go back to get it. Chambers, dogged by Tikkanen. Devils get it to center. Thomas with it there. Here comes New Jersey. Nice move by Peterson, and he couldn't beat Driver. And Richter will hang on. 11.1 seconds remaining in the period, and a faceoff in the New York zone. Well, it's such a disadvantage to have a goaltender who cannot handle the puck, and Mike Richter is not a very good puck handler. Your pressure is on your centerman. Jacques Lemaire looks on. Here with 11 seconds, Martin Brodeur would have fired that puck around, and there would have been no problem. Mike Richter instead, the conservative approach, hangs on to the puck, takes the face off, and now Coley Campbell has to rely on one of his centermen. It'll probably be Mark Messier to go out and win the face off. Mike Eastwood out against Doug Gilmore. No, it's not Doug Gilmore, it's Peter Zezel. Zezel and Eastwood dig in. Dave Ellett perched at the top of the faceoff circle, but the Rangers win the draw. Niedermeyer goes in deep, can take a chance late in the period. It comes out in front, backhand high as McLean lofted it over the net as the second period comes to a close, but the Devils had a chance. So the two teams exchange goals, taken in for the Rangers, Thomas for the Devils. After 40, it's 3-2 New York. All but 45 seconds for Steve Thomas to make it a one-goal game again. That's not John Garrett's calf. It's no, my calves are much bigger than that. After 40 years, I guess you can do that. You can have the one cap, one cup tattooed on your leg. And a year after the Rangers did it, the Devils to the Cup, and now these two Stanley Cup winners from recent history are dueling again. And the third period underway, 23-20. The shots on goal favor the Rangers. Shane Churlip 
Couldn't get a shot away. Hasn't seen much ice time tonight. Randy McKay back the other way with Holy. Here's McKay dashing after it. Deep in the Rangers zone, up against Leach. McKay with a goal so far tonight and a couple of other chances. Around on the far side, Stevens moves up. Knocked by him, Messier takes his man down. And Mike Richter plays it around. Adam Graves tries to chop it out. And it gets out to center. Sherla looking for Messier at the end of the shift. And Stevens broke it up and sends it back into the New York zone. A bad change for the Rangers. They didn't get it over the red line and they were headed to the bench, but the Devils also on a change, couldn't take advantage. Surprised Churla, not Essa Tikkanen, was out to start the third period. Tikkanen, a pair of goals for New York in the game. Puck chopped down the ice by the Rangers. And this will be icing. If Danico gets to it, he overskated it, and now the Rangers will play it. Boy, that could have been a costly mistake, but the Devils will go back on the attack. Here's a shot off Samuelson, and that's high into the seats. Well, in the second intermission, Scott Oak had a chance to talk to Ranger assistant Dick Todd. Dick, twice now the Devils have cut quickly into your two-goal lead. How do you explain that? Well, they, they come out you a little harder. They pushed hard. Uh, there was a couple of checks that were made right after we got the two-goal lead. At that point in time, we had uh, four penalties to one, and uh, you know you could just see that uh, they were getting away with a little bit there, and they pushed hard and got back into the game. Ken Danico goes back, and there's the boards, and at that end, in behind Martin Brodeur, that's where the Devils come in and go off. There's lots of ruts and divots, and Ken Danico went right over. And there's both Samuelson and Luke Robitaille. They think it's going to be icing. They're talking it over. Why didn't we just get it out, dump it halfway? <laughs> and instead, Robitaille had a chance coming Whoops. late. The way they went, Wayne Gretzky tried to throw it across. The Devils picked it off. He was coming very late. That's coming off the play. Battle along the boards. Odeline gloves it down, shot, doesn't get through the traffic. Here's a chance, but playing, stopped by Richter. And it's pushed out to center. Approaching the two minute mark of the second period. Randy McKay winding up for New Jersey. Over the line was Zelopukin. Zelopukin in deep, Pat Flatley checking him. It comes around to Ellen. Ellen at the left point, just rolled it back in the corner. Litzker hits Zelopukin with his clearing attempt. Ellett's shot doesn't get through, and away goes Russ Portnell. Portnell skating into the devil's zone, watched by Ellett. Portnell tried to kick it loose, and it comes back to Leach at center. Portnell hits to the bench as Ellett retrieves the puck behind his net. Here's Bukaboom winding up. Remember, Jeff Bukaboom was shaken up in that second period. Back out with Brian Leach on the point to start the third. Adam Graves tries to power his way in front, and it comes out for the Devils. Here's Brian Ralston with John McLean. Shot steered away by Richter. McLean goes after it. It's centered, and Ralston, and on that shot, Chambers moves up. Gilmore in the corner, and his pass picked off by Bukaboom and rolled out. It came outside the line and brought back in offside the call. 3 2 New York early in the third. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the. Brian Leach is so quick, and that is the key to his defensive abilities. He can turn so quickly and take his man out. Good offensively. Shot leaders Al McKinnis, Brian Leach right up there, 256 from the point man. And look at the prolific scorers. Among that group, Steve Duchesne, such an offensive threat in the last month and a half for the Ottawa Senators, and I think his production was one of the reasons, and along with Ron Tugnut, why the Ottawa Senators made the playoffs. Leach leading all shooters, his offside is called for the Rangers in the postseason, but with only one shot tonight. And has the only goal from the blue line, although Bruce Driver has had a couple chances here tonight, shots that have made it through. Adam Graves still trying to break through. Right now the Rangers protecting a one goal lead. 
as they bounce it down the ice. Tekin and giving chase. And Niedemeyer getting there ahead of him as Kandanico was running some interference. And Jeff Boogaboom back here for the third period. Played one of the first shifts with that hyperextended elbow. Tended to by Jim Ramsey in the second period. He missed a couple of turns, but he's back here in the third. Coley Campbell saying one of his MVPs of this series, although it's young and in the playoffs, he was outstanding against Florida. A real physical presence, and Coley says he plays much better when he keeps it simple, and he has kept it simple, just been the physical presence. Look at Jacques Lemaire. Bill Murray, the New Jersey Devils trainer. Jacques Lemaire saying he just would be happy with a split of these two games to get back to square one with the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Well, he's very much in this one. Goal down and plenty of time left. And his team has been resilient tonight. Bouncing back from a couple of two goal deficits to Stay within striking range of the Rangers. Pat Flatley sends it into the New Jersey zone. And Overline goes back to get it. Up front, Bobby Holik with Randy McKay and Steve Thomas. It's been a good line for New Jersey tonight. Lead pass for McKay slides all the way down on Richter. That Blitzer picks it up. The Kamloops native skating through center. Into the New Jersey zone, flatly going after it. He's held up. Robitaille four checking, flatly up with it, and his shot blocked by Ellen. Knocked out by Holy. Eastwood went sprawling without a stick, trying to glove it out. And he'll head to the Ranger pitch. As driver turns it up ice. Pass too far for Messier. Ellen hit by Cortnell. Oh, the line watched by Messier as he plays it around to Ralston. And hit Graves, and Graves goes after it. Another funny hop, came in front, shot just went wide. Boy, that's three times tonight out of that corner. There's a shot off the bar as Bookaboom let fly. Boy, there's ruts down there, John, and I don't know what else along the boards and glass. Now Steve Thomas taken out by Leach. Comes out in front, and Bukaboom sends it ahead for Graves and Cortnell. And I don't think we've seen Essa Tikkanen in this third period. As the Rangers make a change, Gretzky's out. And Tikkanen has gone to the bench after a quick appearance. It's Gretzky now with Sundstrom, and Graves slow to get off, and here comes Tikkanen. Zelapukin on the move. Mallory Zelopukin at the line. In for Garen, looking cross ice. There's Niedemeyer, put it on net. And the rebound went to Tikkanen. And he flips it out to center. 5.45 gone, third period. Still 3-2 New York as Niedemeyer has some open ice. Here's Scott Niedemeyer taking the long shot. Driver tries to clear the rebound, kept in by Danico. It's loose in front of the net. Here's a chance, Richter down, and what a stop. Richter hearing it from the fans after a big save. And the fans on their feet. That's New Jersey's seventh shot of this third period. The Rangers have yet to test Brodeur. What a nice touch pass by Doug Gilmore. Gilmore sets up Zelopuk in the backhand. He can't get it high enough. And Richter does his Dominic Koshek imitation with the back stroke and keeps the puck out. Well, he kept the gloves on this time. <laughs> that spectacular backstroke save off John McLean with just over a minute to go in game two, and he hit it afterwards that he'd been practicing that. Well, he waited until Zelopukin made the move first. Goaltenders have to be patient. Richter showed his patience, waited, stacked the pads, made the save. Devils win the drop. Here's Ellett going around flatly trying to center. And that's off the stick into the crowd. Zelopukin with one of the more dramatic goals of the seven game set in 94 when he beat Mike Richter with 7.7 .7 seconds to go in game seven. 
to force the double overtime. There's the save you're talking about, Chris. Late in the third period. One nothing game, John McLean goes in, off comes both gloves. The catching glove was the one he got his left hand on, and here's the one tonight. He's much more in control in this one tonight. Over he comes, waits for the move, and there he goes again, swimming backwards, making the save. Wayne Gretzky was marveling after the game at Richter's performance and said, you know, it's amazing that there are two goaltenders living within 10, 15 minutes of each other in Brodeur and Richter. Two of the best in the NHL have showed it in this series. Andy McKay taken out by Litzer behind the net. Now flatly after the loose puck. And he just flips it out to center off a stick and out of play. 13-20 remaining, third period, and a one-goal game as the Rangers continue to lead. And the reason that these goaltenders, two of the best, they're so calm, no pressure, they don't feel any pressure. Here's the crash line for the Devils. Minus Mike Peluso and enters Steve Thomas. Thomas has a goal and Mike Peluso in the crash line. Randy McKay has a goal tonight. Good floor checking and no penalty called as Doug Lidster had pretty good grip on McKay's stick. Well, I mentioned to Coley Campbell before the game that that the line matching, the Devils hadn't played Bobby Holik much in the first two games, and he kind of said, Shh, don't say anything. <laughs> we don't want to see Holik. But they have seen Holik a lot more in game three, and he has been a force centering that line with Thomas and McKay. Seven minutes gone, third period. Here's Zelopukin. And he stood up at the Ranger line. It comes around the near side. Chambers have moved up. Adam Graves is there for the Rangers. Up for Messier. John McLean on the Ranger captain. Leach tries to get it out. Now Graves battling against Chambers. Rangers finally get it outside the line. Scott Stevens to his partner Chambers and now Gilmore on the attack. Here's Doug Gilmore checked by Gretzky. McLean bad angle shot and the rebound out to Gretzky. Up ahead it goes. Shane Churla to Tikkanen, over the line, Tikkanen fired it high. Cherla goes down against McLean. Play continues up to McLean, and out to center for Gilmore. Knocked away from him by Karpitsev. Kim Danico will knock it in deep, Tikkanen went down. As he tried to bother Danico. Danico at the point, wrist shot through, and that goes wide of the net. Tikkanen bumped off the puck by Guerin. Now Samuelson against Ralston, trying to get it out of there, kept in by Niedermeyer. Gilmore after it against Carpenson. Gilmore along the boards, there's Tikkanen, and they'll hold it for a face-off, and Gilmore stuck a little elbow up into Tikkanen's face, and that's why they do some battle along the boards. And we'll take a break. 11.41 to go, third period. The Rangers don't mind this trade-off. You're leading by one, and Essa Tikkanen. <laughs> face wash, elbow, a little shot after, and you take Doug Gilmore off the ice, and Essa Tikkanen will take that trade. Coley Campbell will take that trade. The shots are 8-0. Rangers had 14 chances in the first two periods, and that's way above the Devils' average. But here in the third, it's been all Devils, and there's Doug Gilmore sitting in the box. Essa Tikkanen over in the Rangers' side. And we've got four-on-four four hockey again. But the four-on-four four for the Devils without Doug Gilmore is not near as dangerous. Peter Zezel's out there now with Ralston, Stevens, and Chambers. And Wayne Gretzky is out for the Rangers. Mike Eastwood on the faceoff. Samuelson and Karpitsev are out there, and that's Karpitsev with the hit behind the net. Eastwood will play it around. And now Samuelson slowly starts out, played it back, and nobody there. So Richter shovels it around on the far side. Pass out to center behind Gretzky, and Lyle Odeline has now come out with Scott Niedemeyer, and Niedemeyer dangerous in these circumstances. Messier has come on for the Rangers as they have changed. Messier and Gretzky are up front. Samuelson and Driver, 
as the coaches alter their lineup four on four. Wayne Gretzky heads to the bench. I'm sure four on four, Wayne Gretzky would have liked to gain the blue line with control instead of that long shooting. Samuelson went off two, leeches out. Here's Niedermeyer playing it in front. It comes all the way back to the point and pushed out by Graves. So you've got the two great skating defensemen now. Niedermeyer for New Jersey. Leach out for the Rangers. Four on four, and here's Leach. He'll turn back. Ryan Leach, a pass for Graves at the line. Adam Graves watched by McLean. Swings wide, now into the slot, drops it, Leach! Quick shot right on, stopped by Brodeur. 35 seconds left in the coincidental minors. Niedermeyer pounds it in. Lindstrom back to get it. Up for Leach, Gretzky's back out there now. Up front, along with Sundstrom, off his skate. And it's turned back in by Guerin. High slot, a shot, and that went wide as Guerin went by the rebound. Chambers looks to the far side, broken up by Gretzky. Up with Sundstrom, a pass cross ice, and Sundstrom will just play it in deep as Gretzky goes to the bench. Oh, Samuelson just knocked down Terry Fraser. That drew a little applause from the crowd. Now Bill Guerin after it. Gilmore out of the penalty box. The team's back at full strength. Gilmore trying to work his way in front. Here's a chance, he'll leak spun it wide. Stevens moves up, and he at the side of the net. Heavy traffic in front. Richter without a stick, as the Rangers send it down the ice. And a wild scramble in front of Mike Richter. The Rangers come away unscathed. 9.09 to go in the third period. Here's Thomas Tripp, penalty coming up against Brian Leach. And the fans at MSG in an uproar. Uh, Brian Leach likes to play the puck. Tried to play the puck on Steve Thomas. Steve Thomas cut by him. Leach tries to play the puck. Thomas goes inside. Leach gets the foot out. Takes the penalty. Now, would there have been a man in the crease on the play where Doug Gilmore gets tackled into Mike Richter? Essatikinen on Gilmore. Uh, as he pushed in, Gilmore, <laughs> Gilmore makes sure that he stays in the crease. The shot came off the side of the net. Essatikinen and Gilmore go at it again. But the penalty to Leach is for tripping. 10.56, and it will be the third power play of the game for New Jersey. At the other end, another stop by Martin Brodeur. On a good chance by Brian Leach, Adam Graves with the pass back and through the screen Martin Brodeur was lucky he got hit with that one. That was the first shot on Brodeur here in the third period. The shot's 9-1 to one in favor of New Jersey and they're looking for the go-ahead goal with the man advantage. Power play that has not nearly been as efficient in this series as it was in dominating the Montreal Canadiens. Ellett can't keep it in at the Far point position. McLean's up front. He got his glove up in the face of Driver. Fans react. And now, nice play by McLean to knock the stick back into the hands of his teammate Dave Ellett. Hold line up to Bobby Holik. At center, he'll send it in. Stopped up by Richter for Carpenter. That's Holik crashing in there to get it back for New Jersey. At the point, it's Ellett. In behind the net for Holy. Working. Rangers can't get it out. Here's a shot in and the loose puck cleared by Driver and finally out by Graves. Mike Richter did a good job to come out and stop that shoot in. It went around the boards and Carpetsev couldn't get it out and twice he fed it up the middle where he should have been able to clear the zone and didn't. Minute gone in the power play. Here's Garrett. Steve Thomas fires it into the near corner. Gilmore jostling with Samuelson. Aaron now, hit by Bukavu. There's Peter Zezel. Watched by Bukavu, center, Niedermeyer stopped by Richter. Richter down, loose puck, Gilmore scores! Doug Gilmore has tied it for the Devils. We saw Wayne Gretzky in the first 
period, right place at the right time. The good goal scorers always know where to go, and Doug Gilmore gets in position on all the puck bouncing around in front of Mike Richter. Nice play by Peter Zezel, gets the puck out. That shot is stopped by Mike Richter. Now he can't get back up. Jeff Bukaboo makes the save, and Richter is swimming and can't get back up. The puck finally comes. Oh, baby, there's somebody in the crease. If they go upstairs, this and one's not going to count. And now they are going upstairs. Delayed reaction. The Devils infuriated. Scott Stevens racing over. And was it Bill Guerin in the crease? Steve Thomas had a goal disallowed in game two. Watch number 12. There he is, right through the crease. And he had no reason to go through the crease. Now, did he clear it? Somebody just looked like they waved it off upstairs, but we'll wait for Kerry Fraser to make an official signal. Bill Guerin had no reason to go through the crease. Players are aware of the rule. They know how strictly it's being enforced, but the heat of the moment. They've already put the goal up on the scoreboard for New Jersey. That doesn't mean it'll stick there. But the scoreboard says 3-3, we're just not sure. It is 3-3 yet. Now well, here's the overhead, here comes Bill Guerin, is the puck, yes. Yes. Yes, it goes in with Guerin in the crease still. And they have signaled no goal. And the Rangers catch a break. Jacques Lemaire says he likes the rule. And it's burned him there twice no in the series. <laughs> and he's benefited from it twice. And there's Bill Guerin. He's talking it over with the linesman, Jay Scherer. Well, here was Steve Thomas's goal in game two. Pass from Gilmore. Thomas is there. Thomas was clearly in the crease on that one before the puck got there. And here's Bill Guerin. Doug Gilmore takes it. He shoots it. Guerin's feet are in the crease, in the crease, in the crease, in the crease. Still yes. in the crease, and the puck's in the net. And Bill Guerin is talking with Jay Shares. I don't know whether Jay Shares went over to Kerry Fraser and told him, because Kerry Fraser did not go over to have it reviewed right away. Well, we've debated this long and hard that I just have a feeling it's another case of right call, wrong rule. I don't know what they're going to do, make the crease smaller. Well, Coley Campbell says, let's put it back in the referee's hands. And was Bill Guerin interfering with the goaltender? That should be the final criterion. As far as he's concerned, he may not share that opinion right now. And there's Robbie Fatorek talking things over. Robbie Fatorek has contact with people upstairs, and so I'm sure he's seen the replay. Jacques Caron is the goaltending coach of the New Jersey Devil. And I know he likes the rule. Old goaltender, Jacques Caron. 38 seconds remaining in the penalty. And the Devils back on the power play. Still behind by a goal. Niedermeyer sends it in. That would have ended Gilmore's drought. And they ended Thomas's drought earlier in this game. Gilmore centers it. Scramble. Rangers can't clear. Zezel has it back for New Jersey. Chambers shooting. Loose puck in front. Gilmore reaching for it. It ends up on the end boards. Devils still have possession. There's Gilmore. Boy, he's been dangerous on this shift. There's a shot that didn't miss by much. But it's going to come all the way down the ice as the penalty to Brian Leach has expired. Rangers dodge a big bullet. There's a collision right in front of the penalty box as Niedermeyer was hit by Samuelson, but it's Samuelson still down. Now he's up and getting back in the play. And buzzing after the disallowed goal. Rangers still on their heels a bit, and icing is called. 6.42 to go. It's still a one-goal game. A little extra shot, and Kerry Fraser was right there and let Scott Niedermeyer get away with that one. But that was a good hit by Samuelson. He didn't have to stick up, no elbow, and 
I'm surprised the Rangers haven't tried to step in front of Scott Niedemeyer a little more. It's hard to do because he is so quick, but he has had free reign tonight, and he has been a force. The Garden rocking with 6.42 to play. Rangers clinging to the one-goal lead, trying to take a one-game lead in the series. They control the faceoff. Gretzky flips to center, gloved down by Odeline. And he hands it to Ellett, takes the return pass. Up ahead to Thomas. Steve Thomas put shot off Karpitsev. Samuelson shoveled it in the corner, centered in front. Gretzky down as he did a good job defensively on Randy McKay. Up for Sundstrom. And he'll roll it in. Quick changes for the Rangers as Gretzky goes off again. 6.06 left. McKay. Off the boards to the Ranger line. Leach up for Flatley. Into New Jersey territory. Hartnell couldn't stop it. And it's Zelopuka firing it in. McLean gets there first in front. And Richter stopped it with Carpenter crashing the net. Now Cortnell starts back. Long shoot in wide of Brodeur. Cortnell will dance in after it. Along the boards, McLean has it for the Devils. At the line, Cortnell stops it and fires it right back in. Here's Adam Graves picking up the four check. On the line. Up the boards for McLean. Kept in by the Rangers. Here's Graves. Weak backhand wide. Ellett now will try and get it out for New Jersey. Too far for McLean. And the Devils will change it up. Quickly ahead for Lidster at center. Tried to hit Graves, and New Jersey takes over. Ryan rolls to Tried to bounce the pass for Garen. Gilmore goes after it. Against Driver. Centering pass. Goes to the far side, and Messier ahead. Here's Robitaille. With Sundstrom. Robitaille in, and they're calling offside. Oh, and that looked close. But Sundstrom held up, and that negates a two-on-one for the Rangers. Gares is right on the line. He's in perfect position. Nicholas Sundstrom drags the leg, but then he lifted it up. And he kept dragging it. I think that would have been all right, but Shares made the right call. Sundstrom was offside. Shares apparently with the sharpest eyes in the house tonight. He caught Garen in the gold crease. At least judging from the Devils' reaction, it was Shares who first brought it to the attention of Kerry Fraser, and then that offside call. And we're under four and a half minutes to go. Still a 3-2 Ranger lead. Here's Bobby Carpenter trying to come in front. A backhand wide of the net. Richter down. Heavy traffic. That was Scott Niedemeyer in front of Richter. As the Rangers send it down the ice. And icing the call. New York hanging on. But unfortunately that one stayed out off his leg for the Devils. Scott Niedemeyer has been dangerous coming off that point tonight. Rangers win the faceoff. 4.04 to go. In regulation time, a 3-2 New York lead. Leach out to Messier. He'll send it in. Brodeur almost deflected that one into his own net. And there's a hook by Tikkanen. Upending Stevens and a penalty with 3.49 left. The Devils thought they had the tying goal on their last power play. They get another chance. Especially in the offensive zone. When you're panicking defensively in your own zone, it's not bad taking penalties. It might be preventing a goal. But here's the little tug by Tiekman on Scott Stevens. And Scott Stevens goes down. The Devils had a goal disallowed. You know the ref is going to be looking for something. And there it was. Tiekman gave Stevens a chance. Stevens took it. And now the Devils have another power play. Esatikin and holding his breath now in the penalty box. He's been an offensive star tonight with a pair of goals. But now off for hooking. And the Devils, there are their numbers on the power play. Trying to break through. They thought they had one just a few minutes ago. John McLean's up front with Bobby Holink and Steve Thomas. 
Chambers and Niedemeyer, the point men. Mark Messier, Adam Graves, the penalty killers with Leach and Bukabu. Oleek to McLean. He'll clip it in. Thomas behind the net. Takes a look, puts it in front. Messier there and backhands it away. Niedemeyer goes back to get it as Gilmore is back out on the ice. He was the spark plug on the last power play. Stopped at the line. And Sundstrom sends it back into the devil zone. Well, that's what the Rangers weren't able to do on the last power play they were facing. Stand up at the blue line. They let the Devils gain the zone, and the Devils got a chance to get set up. Under three minutes left in the game. This could be icing. Samuelson touches it. And the fans respond as the Devils call for icing. Exactly a minute left in the Tekken and Minor. Well, tomorrow night from the Edmonton Coliseum, the Edmonton Oilers will try to record their first win of that Western semifinal. And the Edmonton fans with a chance for the first time to salute their team since their dramatic win over Dallas. And they're trying to get faith by saying the Chicago Blackhawks won two at home. And if you feel that way, you can voice your opinion. Full crowd noise, one 900 877 for 95 cents, make that call. Get your parents' permission if you're under 18. On the face-off, Gilmore gets possession. Oh, the line to Garrett. Here come the Devils. Over the line, played in behind the net, and a chance for Adam Graves, who will skate out with it. Over center, Messier's gone to the bench, and Graves will go for a skate. Fans like this, still on it. And now taken away, but 30 seconds remain. And Graves gets an ovation as he heads to the bench. Now Dave oh, Ellett to the line and over. Twin. Ellett moving in, backhands in front, and Eastwood clears. Sundstrom racing after it, but own line will get back first. 10 seconds left. In the penalty to Tikkanen. Thomas to the line. The Devils. They're standing on their blue line, and these fans are standing at MSG. Tekin is out, and immediately is down on the ice, writhing in pain. And Bobby Holik had the stick up on Essa Tekin, and now the linesman who was over there have to help referee Kerry Fraser, who was on the other side of the ice. Here comes Kerry Fraser. He's over talking with Jay Scherz and Shane Heyer. Taken and saying, I hook Stevens, got a penalty. Now I take a stick in the face from Stevens. What's going to happen? Well, there's Taken and, and there's Scott Stevens stick. And Bobby Holik is right on the scene, but it was Stevens stick who was waving it, was forced up on Taken. And I don't think there's going to be any call. Kerry Fraser has not gone over to the penalty box. And Taken and Although there's blood on his shirt, now he's coming over to talk to Kerry Fraser. John, no uh, shots for the Devils on that last power play. They're 0 for 4 and only two shots. And a goal disallowed. That power play where they had the goal disallowed, they were in complete control in that one. This last power play, the Rangers did a much better job. They stood up at the blue line and the Devils just refused to shoot it in. No penalty, apparently. A minute 39 to go, and here's another look at the high stick. It's off Bobby Holik's shoulder, catches Essatikin and across the bridge of the nose. And there's Jim Ramsey again, the former Winnipeg Jet trainer, now with the Rangers, tending to Essatikin. It's time for Martin Brodeur to leave the net soon. That puck deflecting over the glass and into the crowd. And Tikkanen adds his name to the list of uh, stitch victims in this series. Well, there's the boxer's gel on Essa Tikkanen's nose. Well, Brodeur will be vacating soon. Face off just inside the Ranger line. Minute 34 left. 
scrumming in there from the drop. Devils up with it. Niedemeyer's shot. That hit Leach. Leach up high on Niedemeyer. Now Stevens moving in. Here's a pass and Richter a save on the short side. Rodeur still hasn't left the net. Puck chopped and sent down the ice. Back to get it, Ralston. Over to Stevens. Peterson can't handle the pass. Broken up by Graves. What a job he's done in this third period, protecting the lead. Under a minute to go. 3-2. Here's Eastwood. Backhanding it wide. But they keep Brodeur in the net. Now Brodeur is taking off. Holik starts away. Pass broken up by Leach. Niedemeyer got it back into the Ranger zone, and it's flipped high in the air. Back down into New Jersey territory. Here's Gilmore at center. He can't get it past the Ranger line. And now New Jersey sends it in. Samuelson turns, fires, off the boards and out. Time running out on New Jersey as the Rangers try and make this 3-2 lead stand up. 15 seconds left. And a whistle. I'm not sure why. Well, Don Cherry had a complaint about an icing call in an Edmonton-Dallas game. Well, here's an icing call that the New Jersey Devils circled around before they got to it, and Colin Campbell doesn't like the call. We're going upstairs. This will probably be a clock violation where they let the clock run down after the whistle. They've had 13.7 seconds up on the clock. And somebody at the Devil Bench spotted some extra time. Well, here's old Samuelson off the glass, high not stick. very hard. I think they're calling a high stick, John. Well, here it goes. Now, Chris, you could skate faster than that. Bobby Holik's going back to touch it, and I'm sure Bobby Holik could skate faster than you. Here's the clock. There goes the icing. It's going, going, going. Holik goes back to touch it. 16, 15, and it kept on going. There's only 13.7 up there. And they're putting it back up to 15.3. Home ice advantage. Philadelphia used to be the worst that I played in the spectrum. There would be two or three seconds go by. And a timeout is being called by New Jersey. Timeout, New Jersey. Shots on goal, 14-3 in favor of the Devils in the third period, but they have not been able to close the gap yet. Well, they've tried two soft shootings. They've tried to flip it in, and Mike Richter is not a good puck handling goaltender. I'm surprised they haven't just rang it around the boards and tried to go and force it deep. Instead, the Devils have tried to flip it in, and they've been stopped twice. Statue of Liberty sweaters. Well, there's lots of those around. They're the hottest selling sweaters. And what do you think of the Vancouver Canuck new sweaters, Christy? Orca Bay logo on the Canuck sweaters? I'll wait till they're, are they officially confirmed as the new jerseys? Uh, I think they, well, I don't know whether they've had the formal I'll, press conference I'm going to reserve comment until the formal press conference. Okay. But I do like the Statue of Liberty jerseys. Now Jacques Lemaire directing traffic. He said he didn't get the results he wanted from the timeout called with the two-man advantage in game two. Let's see if this works more efficiently. Peter Zessel playing his first game of the series, digs in, up against Messier on this critical faceoff. Messier wins the draw, Lukovo fires it around. Niedermeyer racing back gets the icing call, exactly eight seconds left. And they can't complain about the clock on that one. Stopped immediately. And Mark Messier, they want the faceoff in this corner. Messier is better on the left-hand side, and the Rangers want the faceoff in the left corner. And they're not going to get it. Bukaboom, the linesman saying, had passed behind the net before he fired it around, so the faceoff comes back to the right corner. Boy, this series is building in drama just like it did in 1994 when they went seven. 
Rangers lead by one, eight seconds away from leading the series by one. As Zezel and Messier go back to work. Puck came right to Richter. And a second, almost two seconds run off the clock. Well, that's why Mark Messier wanted the faceoff in the other corner so he'd be drawing towards the boards instead of at his goaltender. He got that on his backhand, drew it back, went right to Mike Richter. He'd much rather be drawing towards the boards. Remember that Yashin goal that decided the Ottawa series? Or forced overtime in Game 7. Rangers win the draw again, and the Rangers are going to win the game. And now we've got some pushing and shoving along the boards, but Adam Graves is just going to skate away. Mike Richter and the Rangers hang on in the third period, back on their heels. But again, the Devils, problem scoring. All those chances, and couldn't put it by Mike Richter. They'll be talking about a disallowed goal tomorrow. Doug Gilmore thought he had the tire. Instead, the Rangers celebrate. A 3-2 lead through 40 holds up. 2-1 the series for the Rangers. Molson 3 stars Estetikin and Scott Niedermeyer and Wayne Gretzky, who's with Scott Oak. All right, Ron, thank you very much. Wayne, you've turned your level up a few times in these playoffs to lead your team. Uh, this would be one of those nights. How did you feel? Well, I felt pretty good. I, um, I know the uh, situation we're in. I, I've said it the last few days. This is a uh, very good hockey team we're playing against, and you don't really get a whole lot of chances. And the chances you get, Roder's a pretty solid goaltender. So I felt good tonight, and uh, right off the bat, I, I had some jump, and I felt good, and you know, it was a nice win for us. Gilmore's goal disallowed. Do you like the in-the-crease portion of Rule 78 tonight? Well, we've been very fortunate that, that rule has really uh, been a uh, blessing for our hockey club throughout this playoff. Um, I'm sure um, at the end of the season somebody's going to sit down and readdress this rule, but right now the way the rule stands, uh, it's been of a benefit to our hockey club and we've taken advantage of it. Wayne, was the plan to take it to the Devils tonight so they wouldn't have a chance to trap you to death? Mm -hmm. Well, they're such a good defensive hockey club. I, I said the other day that uh, maybe one of the best uh, defensive teams I've ever played against. They're so solid, but if you get ahead and you can get a couple goals ahead, maybe you're going to open up a little bit to try to uh, get some offense going, and then you're going to maybe get some holes. So we really have been uh, conscious of trying to get that first goal to try to open up some ice, and I think it worked tonight. All right, Wayne, congratulations on the win and a 2-1 right. series lead. Thank you very much. Ron, back to you. Thanks very much, Scott. You know what? Uh, they will be talking about Rule 78B. Wayne's right, but it was a brutal call against the Rangers that gave the Devils the chance to score a power play goal. So it all works out in the end. Uh, this is a dead ringer for the 94 clash when uh, the Rangers won Game 3, 3-2 three, to go ahead, 2-1. to one. Devils, by the way, won Game 4 that time. Tomorrow evening, 8.30, it's the Avalanche and the Edmonton Oilers. You know New York's got 18 goals in these playoffs. 12 of them by ex-Oilers. 5 for Gretzky, 5 for Tikin, and 2 for Messier. That's the reason they won tonight. 3-2 the final for all of us. Thanks for watching and from Toronto, good night.